Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everybody this morning. It's really good to see everybody. For those of you that weren't here this uh, the past couple nights, everybody sat on that side. There's only like maybe three or four of us sitting over here. So it's good to see everybody spread out this morning. This is a sheep. That is a goat. Before I begin, I would like to thank all of you um, for this weekend. Uh, the two speakers that we had were, were very impressed and very, very grateful for the uh, love and open arms that, that they received. Uh, they, were, they were both very humbled by uh, all of you bringing them in, uh, accepting them as family right off the bat. Uh, there wasn't a single person that didn't uh, shake their hands and welcome them. And, uh, just from a personal standpoint, I thank you for that. That is a, uh, a great reflection on the love of Jesus Christ that's right here in this church, uh, in this family. Uh, if you weren't here this weekend, I'll give you a quick rundown on uh, Friday night and Saturday night's message. Friday night, uh, Brother Pat uh, James talked about the Great Commission, what it is and what we do with it. Go forth and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything that Christ has commanded us. Last night, uh, Tom Graham spoke about spreading the gospel with enthusiasm, always being excited, using the tools and the gifts that you have to either go and, and knock on doors, if, if that's what you're comfortable with and telling people about the gospel or finding some way that will bring them to you. That will get them to come to you and ask you questions uh, about whatever you're, you're doing that will open the door for them sharing the gospel. What I want to talk about this morning is sharing the gospel of Christ with love. Love is a four-letter word. That sometimes gets thrown around without any meaning behind it. Webster has several definitions of love in the dictionary. One of those definitions fits what I'm going to talk about today. And it says love is a unselfish, loyal, and benevolent concern for the good of another as the fatherly concern of God for mankind, or brotherly concern for others. Or B, it is a person's adoration of God. Now the Greek words that are used to describe the type of love that, that Webster is talking about here is philo and agape. Philo love is close friendship, or brotherly love. As we get a name from our city of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. This is the type of love that we're supposed to have for each other, for our brothers and sisters in Christ, for our families. Agape is selfless, sacrificial, and unconditional love. This is the highest form of love that is found in the New Testament. And it is the highest form of love that there is. This is the type of love that God has for us. It is because of God's agape love that he sent Christ to live as an example for us, to die for us, to shed his blood for our sins, and to suffer for our healing. And then to be resurrected to give us victory over sin and over death. It is God's agape love that we have the gospel of Christ to share with others in the first place. It is the same type of love that we should have for others in order to care enough about them to share the gospel of Christ with them. It is the love, this love, that caused us to accept the gospel of Christ. It is love that should motivate us to share the gospel of Christ, which is to bring more souls into God's kingdom. Love 
love should be our ultimate motivator. In his epistle of St. Peter, John Henry Jowitt wrote, There is love whose measure is that of an umbrella. There is love whose inclusiveness is that of a giant great marquee. And there is love who comp whose comprehension is that of an immeasurable sky. The aim of the New Testament is the conversion of an um umbrella into a tent. And the merging of a tent into a glorious canopy <coughs> of the all-enfolding heaven. Push back the walls of family love until they include the neighbor. Push again back the walls until they include the stranger. Again, push back the wall until they comprehend the foe. Love should be the motivation for us to reach a lost world. Love should be the reason that we are concerned about people's eternal lives. <clears throat> love of Christ should be the love that we demonstrate to others. So let's look first at what sharing without love will get us, which is nowhere. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 through 3 says, <coughs> If I speak with the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift, gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. And here we see that no matter what words or language that we use, if we speak to the lost without love, the words are like nothing to them. Now how many of you remember how the adults talked in the Charlie Brown cartoon, the peanut cartoon? When the adult would talk, or, or it was the parent or the teacher, it was womp, 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 womp. Or some of these movies or TV shows where somebody's supposed to be listening, they're supposed to be paying attention, and it goes into what they're hearing, and all they hear is blah, 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 blah. Have y'all ever had that feeling when somebody's just talking to you and that's all you hear? Well, that's what it sounds like when we share the gospel of Christ without love. That's what they hear. It is wah, 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 or blah, 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 blah. They don't hear what we are actually saying to them. And if we have all the knowledge of the word of God, if we can quote, can quote any scripture at any given time, but we do that without love, that all the knowledge that we have will not help us in winning others to Christ. If our faith is strong enough to move mountains, our faith is strong enough to change lives, but it's not filled with love, our faith is not doing us any good in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then finally in verse 3 we see that if we give away everything that we have to the poor, but we don't do it out of love, we've gained nothing, and they've gained nothing. Nothing has been accomplished. Even if we lay down our lives, it is meaningless without love. Love needs to be the basis of everything that we do. Why? It's because God sent His Son to redeem us because He loves us. Not a past tense love, but He loves us. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. See, it is that love 
that gave us the gospel of Christ. And it is that love that causes us to share that gospel. So why and who are we to love? Well, let's look first at who. First, or at why, I'm sorry. First John chapter 4 verse 19 says, We love because he first loved us. Doesn't get any plainer than that. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And if you look at the word love in that, demonstrates His own love for us. Not demonstrated, demonstrates His love for us. The second reason is that we should love because we are commanded to love by Christ Himself. In Luke chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus Christ had been answered, or had been asked, What is the greatest commandment? And He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus had been asked what the greatest commandment was. And he responded, simply to love God and love others. It's not, he didn't make it difficult. He just broke it down in two simple instructions. You love God, you love others. When you look at the Ten Commandments, they're posted over here on the wall. The first four talk about loving God. 5 through 10 talk about loving others. John chapter 13, verse 24. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. Christ instructed his followers to love each other like he had loved them, which was agape love. Unconditional, <coughs> sacrificial love. The third reason of why we should love is it is proof that we have the Holy Spirit within us. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22, 22 through 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So as you can see, love is listed here first. And it is because without love, none of the other fruits are even possible. It is love that helps us demonstrate the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the fourth reason that we should love is because it shows that we are true children of God. Now there was a lot of scripture that could have been used on this point. And if you want to read all of it, go read 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. But 1st John chapter 3 verse 10 says, This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother or sister. So if we don't love others, we are not true children of God. We are children of the devil. It is so important that we follow the commands of Christ to love others because it shows that we are children of of the one true God. That we have accepted the gospel of Christ and the Holy Spirit lives within us. So who are we to love? Well, we just saw in Luke chapter 10, verse 27, that we are to love God and love our neighbor. Above all, we are to love God. When we love God, then we will love our neighbor. And then we are told... In John chapter 13, verse 34, that we just saw that we're to love each other. We're to love our fellow Christians. Those 
who are walking the same walk that we are walking. We're to love them. Whether they're struggling in the valley or whether they're on the mountain, we're to love each other. The third group that we're supposed to love is we are to love our enemies. Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 28 says, But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. There it is. It's true. Christ said it. Love your enemies. Jesus said we're to love those who hate us. That's a little different than what you might expect, isn't it? So when we love those who hate us, we're going to be willing to share the gospel of Christ with them. Now, we all love our families. Because of that love, we desire to see them all saved and going to heaven. Because we love our family, we share the gospel of Christ with them. The same goes for our friends. However, it's much more difficult to love our enemies and even more difficult to share the gospel of Christ with them. This is because it's difficult for them to comprehend the love that we have for them. They hate us. They mistreat us. They don't understand why we love them. See, it's a way of killing them with kindness, you might say. Sharing the gospel of Christ with those who hate us is being obedient to Christ. And not only are we to share the gospel with them, but Christ made it a little more difficult. We're told to do nice things for them. We're told to bless them. We're told to pray for them. Boy, he expects a lot out of us, doesn't he? See, what we are to pray that they will see the error of their ways and that God will open their heart so that they can accept the gospel that you've shared with them. We're to pray that God will open their hearts so they will hear what you're saying to them. They're not just hearing the blah, 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 blah. Pray that God will change them. Not us. Maybe God will use us, but God's the one that's ultimately going to do the changing. Those that are the most difficult to love can sometimes bring us the greatest joy when our efforts and our love leads them to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. So how should we love? We know why, and we know who, but how do we do it? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through the first half of verse 8 gives us pretty plain, pretty plain instructions. It says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Paul tells us that love what it is and what it does. But he also tells us what love isn't and what it doesn't do. This 
description that we see here is agape love. It is the biblical definition of agape love. This love describes our love for God. And it should describe our love for others, including our enemies. Love does have patience. True love. True love has patience, kindness, trust, hope, perseverance, and truth. This is what the positive aspects of what love has and what love is. And the things that love does not have are envy, pride, and boasting, anger, hurtful, degrading, judgmental comments, or evil, or feelings. See, these are things that do not occur when we actually truly love those that we are told to love. <clears throat> True love does not fail. True love will keep you motivated. You will not give up when you truly love somebody and you want to see them accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this all, of course, holds true when we are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we show love, as described in this passage, it is how, sometimes, we share the gospel of Christ. Of course, all of this describes God's love for us as the same love that we are to offer others through the gospel. Now, I understand that this can be difficult for those who are enemies. But it can be done. It has been done. It will be done again. If we share this type of love when we're sharing the gospel, we have a greater chance of winning the loss over. So we will not win them over with a proud, boastful, jealous, hurtful, judgmental attitude. But we could possibly win them over with a Hopeful, trusting, humble, kind, patient, and uplifting attitude. And this is because our attitudes <coughs> reflect our feelings. If we truly love someone, our attitude will reflect that love. If people, <coughs> excuse me, if people know we care, they will be more likely to listen to our message of the gospel. It has been said, and it's been proven to be true, that we may be the only Bible that somebody reads. And if that is true, then we must radiate the love of Christ. Amen. And the best way that we can do this through my experience is through acts of kindness. Now, there are two types of acts of kindness that we can do. You heard uh, my father-in-law speak last night about uh, the Christian Motorcycles Association. And if you didn't learn anything last night, I promise that you learn that he rides a motorcycle. If you got nothing else out of it, I bet you got that. But a lot of what we do is plan acts of kindness. We'll go to a rally and we'll set up a booth to give out water, uh, give out coffee and hot chocolate uh, during the winter when we do toy runs uh, and stuff like that. And it is planned acts of kindness with the point of opening the door to sharing the gospel. It is a way to, to bring them to us. We give them something that they need. And it opens the door for us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. We're demonstrating the love of Christ. Other examples may be setting up a, a, a drink giveaway on a hot summer day at, at a traffic light or at Walmart. And Walmart will allow you to do it. You know, you get two, three people to go out there and you set up a table with... Uh, some ice cold drinks or even some coffee. There are people that like coffee even if it's 110 degrees outside. But it opens the door 
for you to possibly share the gospel with somebody. And if you sit out there all day long on a Saturday in 100 degree weather and you win one soul for Christ, it was worth every minute of your day. These acts are planned in advance to open the door. Other examples may be uh, car washes, fluid checks, uh, automobile window washes, uh, and then, you know, other events. That you just have to brainstorm. But anything that can be planned to, to bring people in that will open the door is a planned act of kindness. But then you hear about things all the time, random acts of kindness. Random acts include paying for someone's groceries or paying for a meal for the person who's standing behind you in line. You know, maybe it's a, a mother and, and she's there and she's got three kids and she can't, she can't even keep them you know, all in one spot so that she can order. But if you go ahead and pay for that, that'll take a load off of her shoulders. Or uh, example of some things that I've done. You know, maybe I'm pumping gas at the gas station filling up our car. And somebody needs help. They're having problems getting their gas to pump. Go over and help them out. You know, just random things that, that just happen. Uh, helping someone who's broke down on the side of the road. Oh, we've all seen that. Stuff like that. It's demonstrating the act of love for Jesus Christ. And for all you know, you may take five minutes to stop and help them fix their car on the side of the road. And they ask you why you did it. And you can simply tell them, well, because God loves you and so do I. Well, what does that mean? Tell me about this love. It's open the door for you to share the gospel. Random acts are events that aren't planned. They just happen sometimes at the spur of the moment. You don't plan to go out and do random acts of kindness. If you do, they're planned. They're not random. They don't just happen. Sometimes you'll feel the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart to go and, and help somebody. You know, maybe you're sitting in the restaurant and uh, a couple of uh, our servicemen and women walk in. You feel the Holy Spirit pulling on your heart. Go talk to them. Go pay for their meal. They may have never heard the gospel of Christ before. They may have never had the love of a Christian displayed to them before. And if you have this feeling, follow through. I promise you will be blessed a whole lot more than you bless them. I guarantee it from experience. You will be blessed more than you have blessed them. Amen. God may be opening a door right then and there for you to share the gospel of Christ with someone. And if you miss that opportunity, you miss the possibility of winning a soul for Jesus Christ. And these opportunities happen, and they happen daily. You just have to be listening for that still, small voice to alert you to it. We need to be prepared to obey the commands that Christ has given us to go forth, share the gospel of Christ, share His love with others. This is the ultimate demonstration that we can do to show God's love. Doing things for others. 1 John chapter 3, verse 18 says, Dear children, let us not love with words and speech, but with action and truth. You've all heard the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. And it holds true when sharing the love of Jesus Christ. You can tell somebody you love them all day long, but until you show them that you love them, then it's just blah, 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 blah. Share love, mean love. Romans chapter 12, verse 9 says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Our love must be sincere. People can see right through fake love. They can see right through it. It's like looking through a clear glass. Clear glass. Fake love is evil. 
It's not true love at all. When we love Christ, we love others, then people will see it because we will live it. And we've seen that love should be our motivation for evangelism, for sharing the gospel of Christ. The theme of this weekend, sharing the gospel of Christ. Love comes from God. He demonstrated His love for us through Jesus Christ. God's love is agape love. Unconditional, unselfish, sacrificial love. No matter what we do, if we do it without love, it doesn't mean anything. We ought to love God, our families, our friends, our neighbors, and our enemies. We can demonstrate love that is described in the entire chapter of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, sometimes called the love chapter. Our love must be put into action by working to open doors, and once we open those doors, sharing the gospel of Christ. Our love must be true, sincere love. When we truly love people, we will want to share the gospel of Christ with them. We will be truly concerned about their eternal destination. We will love them like God loves us. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Love is the basis of our faith. It is the reason for the hope that we have. We need to share it by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. <coughs> this morning, we prepare to sing our invitation hymn. Most important thing, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't know Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us that we do not have true love because true love comes from God. Christ loved you enough to sacrifice His place in heaven for a few short years on this earth and sacrifice His life on the cross. It is all about love. The Bible has been called the greatest love story ever told. If you don't know Jesus Christ this morning, don't wait any longer to accept His gift of love. If you need prayer for anything as we sing, please come glad at the foot of the cross because God will hear your prayer. God will answer your prayer. <coughs>